snow is falling all around me. Tears is singing, having fun. Fuck me. Hello, everybody. It is Tom O'Mahony here. You're very welcome to episode 48 of Bookshot. I'm kind of on time this week, can you believe it? Um, Kind of by accident I'm on time this week. Because the fucking snow has fucked up everything else I was planning on doing. Um, What date is it? Oh, today's the 28th. You're all very, very welcome. Good. Suffered in Jesus. To anybody listening from outside the country, Irish people, we don't really get a lot of snow. We get a bit of snow, but we don't get inches of snow. We get a smattering every so often and we have little snowball fights and we go about our business. This shit the last two days has been the real fucking deal. Oh my goodness. Oh lordy. Lordy. Uh, Anybody following my Instagram will see that I got caught rotten last night. I was on the way back from Killarney. Saw a little bit of snow. Um, I was down there. I was hosting an acting class and interviewing today's guest. Saw a little bit of snow. Then I went. I was like, oh shit, that must be all the snow. I'm driving back up along. Pulled in at the petrol station. Obligatory petrol station in Cashel and Tipperary. No snow. About one or two in the morning. I drive 15 kilometres north of that towards Dublin. Mother of Jesus. I was just enveloped in this fucking whiteout. Oh, fuck me. And I got to a point, like, there's no pulling over. The entire place was just blanketed. You pull over, you lose momentum. You may not get going again, like. And plus you're pulled in at the side of a fucking motorway in a whiteout. So you're pretty much a sitting duck. So I just had to, oh my God, it took... It was about half five in the morning when I got home and I left Killarney at 20 past 11, which should have had me home at about uh, half two. So three extra hours. I swear to God, I nearly have, I think I've got fucking carpet tunnel syndrome from holding onto the steering wheel. Oh my God. But you know, it was fine. It was fine. It was like 50, 60 K, which is about 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. And. You're cruising and you're trying to stay in a line with other people. Then all of a sudden, some prick in a van decides... Because you're just driving up the middle of the road, forming one... Up the motorway, forming one two-lane furrow. Or two-line furrows. And some prick in a van just decides, fuck, I'm going to overtake everybody. Uh, lo and behold, the one guy that did do that. A couple of trucks did it, fair enough. But they're, you know, weigh 40 tons. One guy in a van. I met him two miles up the road. Sideways. Stuck to the but now he hadn't he hadn't wrecked or anything but he just slipped off the road and it was like well that's kind of what you get you bollocks oh what an interesting weekend I had I was hosting in uh, Cashel with the mighty Jim Elliot Paul Marsh and no not Cashel I was in Clanmel in Tipperary I beg your pardon in O'Keefe's good fuck I was at and John Cleary good night good night not a massive crowd but good right good crack. Jim brought me back um, reindeer jerky from Norway. He'd been in Norway the week previous. And he brought a the jerky, reindeer jerky was fucking gorgeous. But he also brought reindeer heart and reindeer tongue jerky. Hmm. An acquired taste, I have to say. I went for it anyway. I ate it. And I shared some with the dog. But I ate it. Because, you know, it's a gift. You can't not use a gift. I'd avoid it if I were you. If, you, if it's put to you, yeah, I'd give it a go. But don't order it off the off the menu, do you get me? But as far as the jerky goes from venison, say no more. Um, reindeer, it's it's right up there with the best of stuff. So, Saturday then, I was hosting a... Look, look, look at me, Mr. Host. I was hosting a Heineken Rugby Club event down in Cork in the mighty Mount Oval bar. I say mighty because I built the fucking bar. And that's not a metaphor for anything. Actually, back when I worked in construction, I built the fucker. Uh, with Eddie O'Sullivan of... Ex former Ireland rugby coach. I and I'm a big fan of Eddie's analogies. He says things like, Yep, yeah, they're gonna take him to the woodshed and show him their belt. And I, he he threw out a few and he knew I was loving it because I even said it. I said, We're gonna get some analogies and he threw out a few which I if anybody's list uh, I suppose any of the subscribers who got to listen to it, I put it up on Saturday night, I recorded the interview. Like, it was an interview before the game. We watched the game far on behind again. At the break, then we go back onto the podium. We have a chat again about the game, punditry. And then at, afterwards, we have a little quick punditry. And then there's a game where they bring contestants up to win tickets and stuff like that. It's all on behalf of Heineken. And I podcasted it. And the PR company 
asked me to put it private. So for the hundred and odd people that got to listen to Saturday night, but I had to make it private on Sunday until um, the powers that be Heineken have a listen to it, which is fair enough, I suppose. They don't know if I'm being <laughs> defamatory towards defamatory towards Heineken or whatever. I'm not. So when they do have a listen, I'm pretty sure it'll be fine to to re-release. Re Look at me sounded like some sort of artist to re to take the private to click the fucking privacy button off it. Um, and I have footage of it too. So, uh, and then I was down in Killarney, obviously, last night, which is Tuesday night, which was lovely. Uh, better than the fucking drive home. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Fucking hell. And it was weird. Weird seeing it like snow at night, like, because it's, when you, it's as bright as fucking day, because it's just a reflection everywhere. It's bizarre. Um, but yet, oh, also, also fair play. Thank you very much to the first two people who pledged to the Patreon page, do please go, if you are interested in the podcast and you want to hear it getting better, um, it'll allow me, the idea behind it is, like, um, nobody's making money off fucking podcasts, unless you're a big news, like, you know, you're not, nobody's making money off podcasts, but, it's time consuming, and it is expensive to get gear, and the gear I want to get is much better, I want to set up a studio style, and I want to actually get a decent, because at the moment I'm just filming it on GoPro, and stuff like that, which is fine, but it's, you know, it's only fine, I want to get a proper fucking camera and the whole lot to film these things properly. But, like, they sh- it shot pretty, it's pretty, pretty good, you know. And that's on the Patreon page. So if you do go to uh, Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tom O'Mahony Buckshot, you know, whatever you want to, s- if you, even if you don't, it doesn't matter. Give it a look anyway and maybe share it. Maybe your friends are interested. It basically, what it does is you can sling it a dollar. You can sling whatever you feel like. Andy and who else was it? Oh, let me check here now. Have I already said the lads' names? Because I, I had it open there. I just wanted to say thank you very much. Andy and Aiden. Fair play, lads. Fair play. First two pledgers. That's fucking deadly. I, that's actually, do you know what I mean? It makes it kind of worthwhile because it, it's less like you're just talking to nobody when you actually see that there's people replying to you and actually by way of replying, they're making a pledge, which is fantastic. And with that, I'll be putting up like stuff that st- will only be available to patrons, i.e., the video content, some of the vlogs on the way to it, some of the fucking outtakes stuff, just dicking around a bit, but stuff that'll be good fucking crack. So I'm gonna do all the vlogs. And as far as yeah, as far as all like, basically, I want to make it worthwhile for anybody who becomes a patron. So I'll be putting all the video footage. Uh, if I can find a way of making them less massive. I put up the Eric one the other day and I put it on YouTube and I need to be able to, because at the moment Patreon can only take 200 megabyte fucking videos. So I might just put them up in little bits, break them up into little bit, but they're going to have to be really fucking small bits. I'll be honest with you, because even the GoPro films that are fairly strong, because you want to get a decent quality, like, uh, I'm not going to film the thing on the fucking phone. Jesus Christ. So I need to find a way. I'm getting better at it, lads. I'm getting better. I, this is a complete novice slash idiot when it comes to technology. So, Bear with me, but I put up the Eric one just to show kind of what the crack is like. So you'll actually just get the seagulls actually having a chat, you know what I mean? And I'm going to do like some of the driving to the gigs footage and all that, but I'm going to do the gigs footage. I'm going to throw that up as well. So just so you get to see what it's like walking on stage and being a comedian, at least, you know, why not? If that's what's a thing that interests you, it'll be all just cool stuff anyway that won't be available to anybody else bar patrons. So like I said, giving it out, look, Patreon dot com forward slash Tom O'Mahony Buckshot. I'll put the link in the old description here. Like I said, give it a look. Tell me what you think. More than anything, tell me what you think because I, 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 there's no real feedback. There's no real book to make. There are loads of people will tell you how to do a fucking podcast, but you look at, you got to do it as per your 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 listeners want to fucking want to get the vibe. So if anybody has any feedback, shoot me over to Tom underscore Manny or Buckshot Pod, both on Twitter or just uh, shoot me an email. Shoot me an email, bookshoppodcast at gmail.com or just go straight to wait for it, lads. For the, anybody who's this their first time. I never said that at the top of the show. Welcome to anybody who's the first time. Subscribe, click share, all that stuff. Rate it too if you are listening on iTunes. A couple of people have left really nice comments and it's good when there's five stars. If you, if it's any less than five stars, maybe send me a message on Twitter <laughs> rather than actually leaving it for the world to see so I can fucking uh, tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Or I can actually make amends. See, this is the thing. I want to make sure that the sound and all the rest of it. So at least if you're having any complaints, you can just go, you're wrong on that fact. But I don't want anybody having to listen to go, I fucking can't listen to that. Because like even our Gordo one, 
it came it didn't come out great so if i can get decent equipment and that's where i want to go with the patreon thing i've put it up as a goal to like get to a point where i can get decent equipment you'll hear all about it anyway because i'll do enough bitching and moaning about having to try and fucking set it up um so that's about it like i said give it a gander or go to the go to the old website bit by bit now i'm gonna have some free time next week because the move should happen although that has kind of fucked up scuppered this week with the, the snow the i will have more time and i'll be able to get up more of that footage and i'm going to start updating the web like the website is brand new but it needs more stuff and more pages but for now give it a gander again let me know what you think of it if you have some suggestions i'm have all ears because they're i guarantee you about 98 percent of you would know more about websites than i fucking do Anyway, enough of my yammering. I'm going to move straight on into today's guest. He is a multi All Ireland winning football champion with Kerry. He has won everything. He's won everything you can win at the highest level of Gaelic football here in Ireland. He went on to win the inaugural event of competition, I should say, of Dancing with the Stars here in Ireland last year. And he talks about like the the fear of having the piss taken out of him, you know, and you know fucking slagging or whatever with the lads but he ended up fucking loving the end what an absolute true gents my first time meeting him but we chatted back and forth on on whatsapp and stuff and it was a friend he's a friend of dale's dale cronin's who's a buddy of mine uh because they dance in a show together which you'll hear being referenced in the in the pod in this episode fucking unbelievably sound bloke whose life couldn't be fucking busier and the last thing he'd he should have time to do is actually fucking listen to or sit in on a podcast but he totally did he gave me all the time of the day so please uh enjoy the fantastic eat no man eat no man thank you very much you're welcome Great surname, by the way. Great surname, yeah. Uh, are you O'Mahony or Mahoney? Oh, Mahoney? I'm O'Mahony, yeah. yeah. Although still at home, they'd be... Just, the Mahoney's. The Mahoney's, yeah. How many times do you look down on something as somebody's put an E in it? A lot. I think it's one... Even the given the you, like... Time, yeah, even one of the first times, I'd say, that, that I meet people, the first thing they say to me is that, with an E, is it? And yeah. And are like, no. And there's almost no O'Mahony's with an E. No. I don't think I've ever met anybody with an E in it. No, I don't, not, there's not too many. I think they're the kind of, uh, the wannabes, I think. Is this a throwback, maybe? I was thinking maybe it was a throwback from Police Academy. Do you know Mahoney? Yeah, yeah. He had an E in his, all right, like. I think I, came, I just started school around that time, and they came out first, so you can imagine the doing it. Oh, very it same. Yeah. I'm yeah. very same. We're, uh, the, because I was looking down through, I said, fuck me, because I knew, obviously, who you were and everything, but I went, how, is there any point in looking, because I knew you'd won a shit ton, but then I, the first thing that popped up, of course, was the Dance with the Stars, because I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten it during the Dance with the Stars. I, <laughs> but that'll tell you where my brain is at. It was like, clearly a, a sportsman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was in the dancing thing. Yeah. But for other people, I'm guessing, who it's, wouldn't be GA heads or wouldn't be carry heads, like... It's kind of reversed now. Yeah, it's kind of gone full circle, like, so everyone knows a great laugh, because, you know, when I speak to anyone that comes up to talk to me, it's about the dancing. Is yeah, it? I'd say to them, you know, you do 14 years of football... <laughs> medals and then you do 16 weeks of dancing and you're known as Aidan Mahoney the dancer it's instead ridiculous. of Aidan Mahoney the footballer yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous like I mean sure I got I got a free haircut the other day because I had the two Johnnies on my podcast two nothing to do with anything I've ever done before like, but the two lads had been on the podcast and your man loved it he gave me a free haircut it was like oh alright so I took it for what it was but what was it I was wondering about that because clearly you've fuck me like You've won everything that can be won mm-hmm. in football, from uh, all Ireland's to all the way through to leagues to, to to county and provincial. But then when it came to the dancing, was it a case, like because people I'm guessing like say you want the one that did the weather wasn't named Teresa mm-hmm. when she was probably going fuck me this is amazing. But for you, were you kind of going, eh. <laughs> or was it so out of left field? Like yeah, it was like when I heard about it in November first, I was kind of saying to myself. Like your initial thoughts would be, um, the boys will rip the piss out of me, you yeah. know, and the yeah, yeah. slagged and stuff. And <laughs> then I, I kind of thought, I think I'd won actually, if I suppose to say, Strictly Condensed them before for charity, which. Oh, you had me, done one? Yeah, for me, like, as in when you do it, I, I was doing one for, at the time, I was doing one for Down Syndrome Kerry. Right. And you kind of, it comes into your head and you say, ah, it should be the exact same. And yeah. then the very first day I went up there, I was above in uh, Ardmore Film Studios and. They all came in, you had the production cast, and you had all the dancers and everyone. So there's about 200 people there in the background, I'm kind of saying, 
what's going on here and there's a big long kind of catwalk then and this English producer came up to me and he goes you're the I think he called me the gay guy or the GA guy one or two minutes as long as he didn't call he you the gay guy anyway. he couldn't pronounce it and then he didn't know what a GA player was like, but he was like uh, you need to go up on the stage there and uh, up on the catwalk there and you need to dance for the camera because uh, you need to go what? home early and I was there like um, the whole point of coming on the show <laughs> so I'm not a dance he was there like no the whole point of being on the show is that you can dance and there I was black kind of pants and uh, uh, green blazer and I had a black ticket when I was a corona saying, they put you in this shit yeah yeah so I was there to myself oh my god what am I have to get myself into but uh, yeah I came down from Dublin that day and I was there uh, this is totally far it was totally far field from what I actually expected it to be and um, I said to myself after like I was there now and I had to do it because obviously it's something I wouldn't have done. Yeah. You know, I, I'd have told myself a hundred times over and I'd have told myself every single reason everyone goes on about comfort zone journeys and uh, that's what it became. But from the beginning I was kind of saying, oh Jesus, wait till they announce now that uh, we've, that who's doing it? And I remember I was in uh, Lanzarote or I was away in holidays and uh, all I could hear is Z listers, should we call it dancing? There's no stars. Oh, well, that was like, so I, 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 a friend of mine who writes for Water Whispers. He wrote that article. Yeah. Like, oh, and at the time, I'd, it was, and it was only put to me because Avian Garrahy, I was in the watchman called the Panto with her. Yeah. And she came in kind of going, she said it laughingly, but she knew I was friends with McBride who wrote yeah. the fucking article. And I was kind of <laughs> going, oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't me that wrote the article. Was, we still have a show to do. It's fine, you know. <laughs> because <of laughs> yeah, so, and, and obviously you would because, like, anything like that is obviously going to be negative and positive as well. Like, so, for me, it was kind of, it didn't bother me because I think from a footballing background, like, when you win or lose all earns, you're all... Oh, shame is gone. Yeah, you're all, like, you're going to have two sides that there's going to be... I, I wouldn't know it and I hadn't been in that situation yet yeah. or been in the... We'll say the media side, like the other side of life, like so. It didn't bother me, Troy. I didn't know what to expect. We'll say the the, the road ahead, like so. It kind of didn't bother me, but as it unfolded, then like uh, the stress started, then like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but coming close, the, the, the athlete in you, like coming close to the end, you must have been like, oh, I could win this. Did like, that, did you get hungry then, like, or was it still the, crack all the way, like? Well, obviously, week nine we we had a baby, and well, my wife had the baby, but uh, Lucia came along and um, in the middle of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, week nine, yeah, yeah we <laughs> our first baby, yeah, so like great timing, but um, yeah, when I when I came to closer, obviously when week ten or week eleven, obviously week eleven, day went home, like so it was. It was actually heartbreaking for, like, I suppose, for a GA player like me, and it would be tough enough, like, there was there was tears, like, because someone who's kind of room was and stayed with for 16 yeah. weeks. One of someone was definitely going home, like, there couldn't have been three going, or four going to final. And then he went to home, and, like, it, it broke his heart. Do you know what he did, like, and... Well, uh, Dale is dancing yeah, through and yeah, through. Like, yeah, dancing yeah. through and through, like, um, so I remember going down the road after, like, because I, I was coming home to carry every Sunday night, and I said to him, Dale, look, at the end of the day, it's an entertainment show. You know, like, yeah. he'll do very well out of it, like, and he has since. And uh, I remember getting to the final that week, and I said to myself, do you know, no, there's a week left. I could see the finishing line, and meaning the finishing line, I could win it, and meaning the finish line is finished. And oh. I said to myself, yeah, I'll give it out to know. So we came back down to Kerry, I brought Filiari back down, because obviously we had the baby, and um, we rehearsed down here for the week, and, you know, it was there was no stress, nothing. We picked up the first two dances, 100 miles an hour, and we did our show dance, yeah. and picked it up very quick, and... I went back up that weekend and I was kind of saying, like, there was no pressure whatsoever. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way. It was just the way it was. I was kind of saying, right, we've three dances to do it. Just do it. Whatever happens, happens. And, you know, you're in the final. You've done very well for yourself. And, like, just go out there, perform it. No pressure. And there wasn't. There was, it was kind of a case of go out, do the dance, get the scores, come back. And, obviously, winning it then was a, it was a massive bonus. And I remember after, like, Dahi O'Shea, the carry man, they called me out in it. But, um... I said in the floor after, which I genuinely meant because obviously it was the first group to go through as well. Yeah. And I said like that there was no there was no loser, everyone was a winner, like. But Dahi said then to me the following day we were doing the interview and we were on TV and he was like, um and like and you said like, you know, that there was no loser and everyone was a winner. I said, Ah oh, yeah, he goes, I've looked at his reaction and he actually showed my reaction. I'm like that. <laughs> And I just said, that's a Kissing the crest. I was like, all that, like, that's just relief, Danny. I said, it was over. Like, I mean, but, uh, yeah, but it was, it was. Like, it's, 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 it's 12 weeks and it's intense. And as I said, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. But at the same time, and you know, I said, Tom, when you're in that situation, like when you're rehearsing for stuff and you're trying to get it right yeah, on the yeah, day yeah. and stuff like that. And obviously the, the power of social media now is, is amazing. It's because, phenomenal. Yeah, because everyone has an opinion. And what I always say to people is that are even as my job and I talk to we'll say if I go to schools and you talk to young people if you're on social media 
you're on there like for good and bad. Do you oh know? yeah. Like, do you get the negative with the positive? So I used to be laughing every Sunday night. Like um, I'd leave my phone up in the room, we'd come back down for the dance, and you'd go up after. <laughs> you'd see the little blue dot down the bottom. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Dance one great this evening. I won't bother touching that. <laughs> but uh, no, it was all good, and it was it was a great learning curve as well. And I obviously want to stress in my life again probably after it. It was on, yeah. I like to, to go and win it. It's like well, yeah, the pure athlete when it went and won it. But I was because I. Because I didn't, like, see, I'd be out gigging most Sunday nights, mm-hmm. so I, I yeah. kind of missed the whole bubble up. And when I met Dale then, it was like, oh, yeah. And sure, I mean, he's such an affable young fella. Like, yeah. sure, couldn't yeah. help. Yeah. Like, he was saying that you were pretty much his, his surrogate father for yeah, that yeah. period. Yeah. Like, just like, I adopted him there for um, for 16 <laughs> weeks. But, do you know, the one thing I will say about him, like, he, he wasn't the guy for, like, I suppose he was typical to your young person where... A lot of people who go to college will say, and they'd be out the whole time. Dale weren't, and even though we were in Dublin, like, you no. know, staying in, like, and I carried him to the gym there for a few weeks, but we, the back was kind of broken that he had great intentions for the first five or six oh, weeks yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. kill him inside the gym because I knew if it came to dancing, like, he'd wipe me off the floor. So I said, I'll pay back time here, I'll carry him to the gym. So we had some great time. Like, we went, to, I, I remember going to the, the steam or the sauna one Saturday, we were after getting spray tan, and then we went to the sauna, like, and Two typical bios. No, I said it was more. There was more of the fake tan left inside the sauna after <laughs> the Saturday evening. I won't mention the name of the hotel because they're probably going after me for it. But um, <laughs> we had a great laugh, and, and as I said, like he he was like an adult in, in in for a young person. Like he was very mature. Like and obviously he'd seen so much of this as you yeah. as well in the boy band as well. Like but um, it was great to have someone like him there for me as well because. I was only starting out on social media, so he was great. He was oh, my me, God. He was telling me what times to put up at half six and uh, even that was the right time. He has it down. To, the very first day I met, met him, we went to the, it was the Panto launch. Or it was, yeah, it was if we were getting a photograph for the, the launch or whatever. Mm-hmm. I said, come here and I, we get a photograph. I went, oh, grand. And I hadn't, obviously I was on social media, but I hadn't considered the, the implications of this photograph. Yeah, yeah. He took a photograph, I swear to God. By the time I got from that photograph to the car, which took me about a minute and a half, my phone nearly fucking exploded. Yeah, yeah. 150 likes in the time I walked on Instagram or something. I was like, how? And it went on and on. It went to like 1,300 likes. I was like, what is yeah. there to like yeah, about this? I suppose like with the young crowd, he's, he's every teeny buffer in the country as well. Like, so, but he has, he has that likability as well. Oh, he does. Like, See, that's like, the so. thing. He, but he was, as I said, he was great for me because for me that time, like coming up to Dublin, I used to go home every Sunday night and go back to work on the Monday, which, which I thought was very important. And I suppose it's the one difference from this year, I think, the dances are there nearly seven days a week because well, I suppose they? yeah they, like, I suppose it's gone to a different level again this year because they obviously know what's ahead of them now you're talking about year. half a million people a night are watching it yeah, like. yeah. last year like I suppose the, the great thing for us was that you had the unknown we were yeah. not always yeah, ahead yeah. every week which was a great thing this year they, they know what's ahead of them they're obviously they're rehearsing more and fair play to them but I found last year it was great to come home on a Sunday night it'd finish and like you'd nearly pain in your head and your head would be pounding the whole way down the road and that's some drive to go yeah, like, it's, but it's nice when you go back to reality and the, the Monday and then like I remember going back to the car station and people were saying oh yeah did you pick your own outfits <laughs> and, I, and I knew this was coming down the road we'll go well, and they're like no as I said the dancing weren't great no no actually the first week or, or the first two weeks one of my better dances like, was, they were there like uh, are you f- Pick your own costumes. Uh, the finish. I was just saying, yeah, yeah. Oh because, man, like, some of the, the outfits. I was I, wondering, had they ever like, was there ever a temptation like to dip back in? Like they were never going to get you into you know a sequined version of a Garda uniform. Like you know what I mean? No, had ne- that been suggested? The nearest thing I think was the semi final. Like kind was like chips. The, the oh gold yeah, uniform, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that was the nearest thing. Uh, which which was actually was actually kind of cool enough to do the dance, but. It would have been interesting yeah, to do it in uniform. <laughs> We'd be kind of wondering what the public's perspective would be after it as well. Like, so maybe it might have been better off. Like, but um, uh, yeah, like I, I, I've no doubt it went through their mind. But I suppose at the same time, look, since Tame show, maybe you couldn't yeah. do it. Like, uh, are you still playing football? I haven't gone back yet. Um, I came when I finished last year the dancing. I came back playing football. Um, I'm actually coaching at the moment. I'm coaching a team in Cork and um, I'm studying. I'm studying um, strength conditioning. I'm doing a degree with less two years oh, yeah. and yeah and I'm currently working uh, on a website which we're launching in April so I'm kept very busy and obviously the bottom the baby and work as well like so it's enough to keep me busy so no <laughs> football no I train every day it's kind of a learning curve for me I suppose with my course and stuff like that and with this fitness site coming out like so um, I'm the body's in better shape than it was 10 years ago it's just trying to get the time to go from Clarence to Ratmore yeah. I train Clarence which it isn't that far away but obviously I work in Tralee like so you were talking about 45, 50 minutes and... There isn't enough time in the day, right? Yeah, yeah, and you're not home till 11 o'clock at night, like, so... Look, Lucy, I'll be one in two weeks, like, so it's nice, kind of... 
finish your evening, come home, like, and just spend a bit of time with the baby but as well. S and C, like, has like that's that's everything that nowadays. Like, Gaelic football and hurling, it's gone to a level it, it is. beyond nearly the beyond yeah. regular professional yeah. sports, isn't it? So I suppose when people think here of strength and conditioning, they're like, oh, geez, it's the gym and ah, oh, this fellas ball can F. And like, I had 14 years of intercounty football. I went to club 21, 22 years, and I'd have seen every kind of formula. I, I know when times when I bulked too much myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've lost that year, yeah, like yeah, and like I, I've probably found myself like that. I was lucky enough to play until I was thirty six and a half years of age, outfield, which was I'd say unheard of for a long time. But um, now it's changed. Like I see myself now in the last few weeks that I'm doing endurance and speed and stuff like that. Like I think it's changing, and it's, strength and conditioning course aren't just gym. It's it's the whole package. Like you have kind of nutrition in it, the course I'm doing now, and you have speed and you have endurance. And obviously you have screening that you do with athletes at the time. And it's it's very interesting for me. And people will probably say to me, geez, sure, you played in the county 14 years. Why, yeah. why did you do it? And the reason I did it was because I didn't want to be somebody to come along and start training a team, which is something I'd learned before. Yeah, like saying, okay, yeah, geez. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then if it was some county fleet retired, and I'd be training his club. And be like, sure, geez, we were doing those drills there five yeah. years ago. So I just wanted to learn off my own back. And from the course I'm doing now, I actually have. I've learned a lot. And... This fitness website then is going to be kind of GA based and GA orientated and fitness orientated as well. And uh, we've been filming, we've been doing it the last year and a half. We took maybe six months out because of dancing the baby. Yeah. And we're ready to launch now in um, April. And I'm working with my cousin, he's in London. And we've done filming, and it's it's very exciting. And so it's going to be tutorials as well, is it? It'll be tutorials. I saw people like for, for football, I, I see a lot of teams now abroad. and... They, I suppose they might have some conditioning coaches out there and we'll talk about Australia or we'll say America and the yeah, UK like, like, yeah. so they can look in they'll see look at the manage this and like there's there's warm up drills there's balance drills you have core drills we've Aidan O'Mahon his abs in it that was someone outside of a game of that now but we've all those things so it, it kind of relates to everyone it's outside of the G as well like and uh, I, I think I think it will do well I think people will enjoy it because the one thing we were filming it and I, I said to Michael, I said, we need to do something different to, I suppose, you'll have a lot of bloggers and people yeah. out there that do stuff and you can edit it and stuff. And I said, I want ours to be different. So I talked when I went home and then the day we were filming, we actually did two days where we, we filmed up the mountains for our launch video, which will be coming out in maybe two or three weeks. And we went to nicest fitness, Joe Connor, who's involved in Lawrence and the family. He's right. carrying Limerick. Um, he gives me the, the loan of his gym to do all the workouts. And we went into nicest and uh, on the day, we were doing hours and hours of constant exercises. Yeah. So your bench press and your chin ups and pull ups, and then and the finish, the body was just drained. And I just said to Michael, it was like you four him on. I said, this is it now. I said I want to start doing all the balance work. I said I want to start doing more battle rope stuff, so that people see me making mistakes. And you'll see now my videos where I make a mistake where I'm doing a balance and I'm nearly falling over. Yeah. It's with exhaustion, and then I'll correct myself. And I think that's the way people learn. Not this case of where I go into the gym and I do 10 chin-ups and go away for two hours and come back and do yeah, 10 Yeah, so more. you push yourself to failure, like, yeah. so... So, like, and I think that's the way we're going to be different. It's a great right? idea. I'm not doing a whole day where I'll do 40 press-ups and people will come back <laughs> and, I, and I'll edit the whole thing then it looks <laughs> like the idea. This is where I've spent two days so far and we've done, I think, over 60 exercises. And I mean, like, bike, um, treadmill, uh, chin-ups, pull-ups, press-ups, planks... Um, stuff that just TRX rows, stuff that totally just drains you. And then you're doing stuff with the, I suppose, the mini bands for your glutes for activation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your, your legs are on fire and you're just drained. And it's great. Like, uh, it, it, it actually is good. I look back and I saw some of the videos and you're just totally drained, and which for me is a great thing for people starting off as well. And they see these things and they say, I can relate to that because my bands, not this thing where I'm coming in saying, Jesus Christ, he's as hard as a rock. Yeah, because yeah, it is hard to watch you know, these things when you're going, yeah. This looks way too happy and way too easy for that person. Yeah. I know I'd make a balls of that. They, like. they, won't, they love my face. It's not that easy because it's just like there's like a constant grimace, and uh, that's it. Just came into our head, and I said like, that's the way I want it. So from down the line, that's the way we're going to work at that. What you see is what you get. There's going to be no kind of brushing this up here. Where as I said, like I did the chin ups there, and we did I'd say three or four sets. Them. So the first set I might do ten. Second set, like I'm hanging on for dear life doing the yeah. fourth one. And I'm saying like, it's that's, natural looking. Yeah, like, that's yeah. not people see. I don't want to be kind of saying, 
you know, we didn't, did, geez, he did 40 or 50, and now we're going to have a, maybe a, a challenge on every Friday then as well. Where people look and say, sure, that fucker, sure, he can only do 10. I'd be saying, <laughs> and I'd be looking on as well, but I'd be, I'd be closing this down because people are beating, <laughs> the same people are beating me, but at least it's it's realistic, and I think hopefully it's what people want to see. But you can get it. interaction too, seeking see, yeah. your beat it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Be probably, <laughs> they'd be saying, go back dancing. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I look at, and that's obviously why I haven't played football at the moment, but. There's still time yet. The, the year is long, like so. We'll see. And what, who? Where's your club then, in so, relative to where we are here in Clarny? So my club would be, I suppose, ten minutes from here. It's out the out to Ratmore, so you just go to the main road here, and you head for Cork. I suppose heading for Mallow. Would be so we're right in the Kerry Cork border, like, yeah. Obviously on the on the right side of it, but um, yeah. So like we're we're very near Clarny as well, like and I suppose ourselves in Doctor Trokes here in Clarny would be. I suppose there'd be a lot of rivalry there the last couple yeah. of years and stuff like so, which is very healthy as well. Like, but um, you know, we've a great club in Ratmore. Um, Paul Murphy now who plays Kerry at the moment, probably one of the main players at the moment. Doing great stuff. Um, he'd be our current Kerry player. A lot of young lads coming through, and like it, it, it. For me, last year when the dancing finished, it was a great thing to go back into because there's great young lads out there and they love training. Like, and it's great being an old lad. Then, like, and you have years of experience of running within the county. So yeah, when you go in, you know, you know that. When it gets very tough, you'll, you'll always outrun them in the finish because they wouldn't be used to that kind of mental side of it. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because so that, uh, that, 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 that's what I was going to get uh, just, because I know you haven't much time, but like playing in front of 80-odd thousand people, like for your first time doing it, when was your first time doing it? When was your first um, All Ireland? First All Ireland final was two thousand four, and it was it was like a blank. Do you know that would have put you at what? Nearly twenty. Uh, twenty just count twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Man, was that like even walking out into that? I'm sure somebody told you how to prep for stuff like that, but there must be no prep for walking out in eighty odd thousand. No. I, th- I think my I think my seven Paul Gavin were rooming together, like so. You, they obviously put the the team quite for us. Yeah, of course. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember uh, the, the very <laughs> first night, I, the, the morning we came down, I remember I was in Paul walked down, and Gerald Keith the selector at the time was there, and we hadn't slept a wink. Of course. Oh, obviously, nerves and stuff, and I think he kind of said, Morris, I think he said this, Morris Fitzgerald, he said, uh, in 2000, 2007, never slept the night before the game. And then he went on to kick 10 points, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, one, of the, sure. one of the greatest. Actually, that, yeah, that, that's grand. Then I could walk out into the stadium. Well, that works for Morris, then, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, then yeah. you walk out into the stadium, big roar, like, oh, Jesus Christ. But, like. <clears> does that train you? Like, just. It, just it, it doesn't train you. It like. gets, get, you get a buzz me. Like, I found through the years, even when we used to be playing Dublin, and it was the hill, and the, you know, they get a big score, and the, the, the feel is starts shaking. You'd be, you're, you'd be mentally so tuned in. Like, and I think what it was is that, for me, always. Every year I went back in the old I got I trained harder. And when I'd see a young person coming in, I'd make sure I'd train harder and yeah. I'd do things 100% better. Like Because always someone new came in. And then I always found when I went into Crow Park that you had so much work done, you'd mind yourself so much that you were you you no fear. The only fear there was that if, if you were beaten by someone better in a day, then yeah. there, there's no issue of it. But like for me, obviously the 2016 league final I got sent off to the same part in 1969, I'll never forget it, with my seven Johnny Cooper tangled. Then like, coming off, and I was like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" And I remember the the Monday or the Tuesday after. The, the, I suppose it's the thing about G is that you're at home, and Tom O'Mahony is not ringing you saying, "Well, Jesus, you've got to after the weekend. Are you all right, sir? You're, you're at home at the table. Yeah. Oh, holy fuck! Like, what's my? Uh, <laughs> how am I going to face this? And how am I going to face it? Because winning, losing finals, whether it's league or championship or anything with Kerry, like, is there's an onus on you, like, I suppose, from the Kerry Golden Years time that, like, there's this. You're judged on winning finals, and it's a great thing. And yeah, I, I yeah, think yeah. It kind of t- it stands to you as a person as well, because for me, I'm very driven and I'm very motivated, and obviously, <clears throat> I always want to win. No, not everything. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, it, it kind of it kind of instills something in you, like, and so like playing in finals and playing in Crow Park, like for me, I, I was very fortunate. But any time, like, I'm interviewed now, and people ask me about, Do you know, what was the most important thing for you, or, and I, I'd say the training. And I always say this to people, they're saying, I used to go mad like that, but I genuinely mean it. I, I, I miss now, I, I don't miss playing because I knew I came to a stage in my life where I was too old, as in not too old, but you know, you, you're, you're like fucking... Yeah, you're, you don't want around. to be the oldest finger yeah. in town either, yeah. just you're, still you're, trying you're to hang on with your fingernails, like, like yeah. You, you want to go on your own, because I remember, like, I had spoke to him and, and the dancing was starting, and look, the dancing had nothing to do really, and I hadn't made a decision, and I had gone away in Hollis for two weeks, and I trained twice a day in Hollis to keep myself in shape. And then obviously dancing with quicker feet, <laughs> they say with quicker feet. Now, but <laughs> like I kind of came back. Then I knew myself. I said to myself, "No, you know, like this is the time. The time is right now." And then I walked away from it. But the only thing I do miss 
which the club gave me last year was the hard train. Like I remember we the year there we were up the Blask Mountains doing the running and like where your body like, like your body is kind of saying to yourself, give in, give in or your mind is saying give in but your body keeps going. Yeah. And I just became accustomed to that kind of training. Like so that's that's what I miss. So now I train twice a day and I still put the body to that kind of torture. So that's that's why I want to do this website, not because I want to show people me torturing myself. But um you know, because well, it, you can, know, it can it, be good done like you know? Yeah, exactly. But it's great not to waste it. It's yeah. grand to do the Rocky train and all by yourself, but I mean, for the want of not being a total social media mogul, but at the same time, there's no harm in people being inspired by seeing that and going, you yeah. know what, I'll give that a go. Yeah, and like, for me, like even after dancing, I'd be very realistic. I weren't going to open, open up a dance school or I weren't going to be saying, Tom, come on down here now. <laughs> there's, a, there's a set dancing class here in Clarity tonight. I need you to see it. My seven, uh, yeah. my seven Dale are going to be doing front flips. Yeah. My seven Dale, yeah. I'd be doing, he'll show me how to do back flips and I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll kick on from there. But it's like, for me, yeah, like the... The fitness thing was always coming down the line, like, and as I said, it's something I'm very excited about, and it's something I believe in because I've been there, I've done it myself, and for, like, I suppose the one big thing for me is, like, you asked me, like, when did I start out? So when I was 15, 16, I had, some, I had very bad asthma, I had very bad asthma from eight years of age, and I was like, you're a typical young person now where they'd say, look, I can't do it, and I was like that, I'm yeah, yeah. nine, ten years of age, I'm to come off games. And then I went to some of the carry games and I was like, Jesus, wouldn't I love to play that? And then I played with my club and um, I made the carry minors in 98. I got my nose broken in the challenge game. It's been broken lots since. <laughs> I, so I haven't straightened I, I retire. But um, yeah, so like, I, I, and I, I came on the All-Ireland semi-final um, in 98 against Leach when we were beaten. And I never forget the, the Monday my mum and dad picked me up in Clarney and just to look the pride in their face. Yeah. It, it gave me kind of a buzz. And then, I just wanted that then, not because of the whole football side of it. And then, obviously... I, uh, but the history that goes with the green yeah, and gold. Like, yeah. Like, and, like, I was, I'm, a, I'm a Kerry fan, like, and I'm from yeah. Tipperary. Like. And I was young, and I was light, too light for football. I remember Pat Flanagan came in then and started training us, and I put on bulk that time, because I had to. So, like, that's why this website is the way it is, is because I think you have a lot of young people out there still that mightn't be in development squads and mightn't be lucky that there's, there's a development squad there and they're not on it. But at least as they see, all right, Aidan Manning's website, right, I can get something off that, I can work on that programme there, and that will benefit me, because I I know myself that a lot of people, are, that every person is different, the way they advance and stuff yeah. like that. And, um, but there's still confidence in youngsters too, because like, if they think they can't do it, then yeah. at least they could look to you, you had a, you had severe asthma, mm-hmm. and you still managed to play 14 years at the top, of, top yeah, level. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of it too is... Like, it's about mindset. I know there's a lot of talk now at the moment, like, and we're talking a lot about GA, but it's a lot of talk about, I suppose, players coming out saying they weren't enjoying it. And a lot of people would probably say, oh, that's fine for Aidan Manning. Look, he's one of the learns. But I do know what I mean. That, like, if I look back, the medals don't bother me. It's, it's the training I miss, like, and that right. kind of bonding that you have with players and stuff. Yeah. I never forget it because I remember someone asked me before, like, would you do writing in this? And I said, no. And I said, I don't, I don't want to be one of those people that start writing something controversial about. I played with Tom O'Manley for 10 years and then I write something controversial about yeah, him because yeah, yeah. he might be getting lying in the pocket or something. Um, I'd rather meet Tom O'Manley for a pint in the night out and start talking about football and today yeah. we, we ran this and I remember we were up in the Gelt Mountains for a year there in 2014. We won the all Ireland, which we generally did. We climbed the Gelt after a day of training like, and it always stood to us. And, you know, I look back and you have those memories or else only around the muck in October, November yeah. or having fat camper or something like that. Like, you know, where just severe training like and they're the memories I have and that's why I'm very content now when someone always said like which people are very genuine even the carry sport they'll always say do you miss it and I'd say I'd miss the training and they'd be like strange fish but that'd be it like yeah you'd miss the kind of that, I suppose that camaraderie because it, yeah, it's but, going to war nearly yeah, isn't yeah. it and like for me that time like was like we spoke about social media start there I was probably the worst nightmare for any kind of person that wanted to get uh, an interview or something like that because I didn't believe it and the reason I didn't was because I'm marking Tom in two weeks time and next I do an interview and they're you're giving him they're, ammo they're, they're give you, they're, they're give you plenty of father and you're like oh, fuck Tom I, 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 I showed Tom no Tom Tom made a comment about me there last year and <laughs> yeah woven Tipperary and I showed Tom I next, get you and yeah. then Tom comes out and have 20 minutes and he blitz and I'm like oh, and Tom is there like oh, what do you say yeah. so, so like I can kind of see that side and I like like you're, you're retired long enough and I, and I genuinely mean this like you're retired long enough and they'd be what's not far you won't pass you as I say like so there's plenty more things to come around you were so never like, tempted to go into the fashion side of things like your, your ex uh, <coughs> no, roommate no 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 Jesus <laughs> Christ Paul Paul is doing very well for he went full board didn't he at that yeah, fashion thing like. he did and do you know it's something fair play to because it's something he believed in as well like and he went after it like and I suppose a lot of people were kind of saying geez he was mad 
Um, but look, he's the one that's laughing now, like as in he's done so well for himself. Like, and obviously you can see it in Paul like that. But in Paul believes in something he goes after the same as his football. Like um, he always came out on top of his jewels and stuff like that. Obviously, I love my fashion, like, but I don't know what I get to Paul's level now. But who knows down the line? He might need to be get a bit of a contest again. You know, I was, you know, I was only talking with this on another podcast with somebody else last week. You we were talking about uh, just different counties around Ireland, and it was Colin, a mate of mine, he is a successful podcast in Belfast, and he was saying he loves coming down south, south, like yeah. you know what I mean, for a weekend or whatever. I said you need to get to Kerry. I said there's, mm-hmm. it's not just the place looks good or whatever, but w- there's something about there's a. And it's, this is the one, for a better phrase, there's a, a kind of a warm confidence I find in Kerry people. Now, you're being from here submerged in it, and because I travel all over the country, and I'm always watching people for nitpicks, for comedy, yeah. obviously. Like, But there's there's a, like here the last night, we're here in the, in the hotel. The very first night I came here, there was 80 people walked in here for their acting class. Now, in most times I've ever done something like this, there'll be 75% will have them looking at the floor. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of going, oh, Jesus, no, I'm doing this thing, and it's the only, I'm only doing it for the sake of the club. I swear to God, 80 to 90% of the people, including elderly women right up to elderly men, walked yeah. in, and they look you right in the eye, and there's almost a kind of a, I'm proud. Because I, like, I found this about, it's, and I've noticed this about Kerry people before, it's not a cockiness, but there definitely is a, it to me is nearly, there's more confidence. It's up there with the Dublin level of confidence, yeah. but like confidence in themselves more so than cockiness. I thought, you know, I thought you were going to stay there now that they walked in, they were so confident after watching you with the dancing. So <laughs> <laughs> it's me off. But no, no, they're, 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 I suppose, look, from a GA background, like obviously this carry is steep in it, like, but anything like that, I think, and like, like I'm living Clarny here now, I know, like, you talk about the, the pantos or plays or anything acting or dancing, anything that put their mind to it. And not, like, this is not like holding Kerry up there, but I know the people down here a lot. And like even when I was in the dancing that time, like the sport I got down here was fantastic. And like, yeah. and, like it was coming down on a Sunday, and <clears throat> they they knew knew what was coming from a GA background and having no dance experience whatsoever. They knew kind of saying, "You see, he's totally out of his comfort zone there." Like, but you're, you're great sport. And as you said, there like if if you ask them to do something down here in Kerry, yeah. they do it. And like you were saying about the acting here, they give it 110. percent You know, I know. I like it's it's a weird thing. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. that's not weird, but what. I, I just found by other counties who may not back themselves, and I wonder because I've been kind of making this bit of a portfolio on the correlation between a county's normal walking around pride in correla- correlation to their actual GEA success. Because I know, like, I met a guy I remember in Edinburgh last year. I was gigging over there. I just happened to be in a bar. This fellow, where well, he was from, Drogheda. Yeah. And he was sitting there, and he kind of caught me. He says, "Were you in? Were you in a TV show called Damon Ivor of the Wrong Man?" I said, "I was. Yeah, yeah." I said, you "Fucking hell." Where's that accent from? I said, Tipperary. He said, do you know what? I fucking love Tipperary people. He said, there's, there's a weird confidence about you. And he said, I reckon it's down to your hurlers. Yeah. And I, it was from there I was agreeing with him. I was like, do you know what I've noticed that about counties whose teams tend to be doing quite well? Yeah. There tends to be an air of cockiness. Not co- cockiness, but like almost content. Yeah, but I suppose to Kerry as well, like you would have the, I suppose, the storytelling and you have John B. Keane. Well, that's it too. The, like the shows, like, so anything like to... To do an acting rate like that, they they seem to like in Kaylee and music and stuff. They seem to kind of fall head and, head over heels both as well. Like and when they get involved in, them, like I know myself, if I'm into a wedding now, someone said to go up there and dance, and I'd be like, oh jeez, I can't actually because I need my partner, and obviously I'm not going to fly her back from Estonia like just for a wedding or something. And like and like actually we cry now, like we will find out he, he will well out to move, and I'd be like, I can do a jive, all right. <laughs> like, <laughs> but here's the thing, like and just like that, I. Because sometimes they, they struggle to get numbers for these things, these yeah. these, uh, these Oscars nights. They didn't struggle at all. No. They had to tell people, like, and as it turned out, a script was a bit had to be rewritten and there was three extra people. And that was always a nightmare if that happened in the past. And with this one, I just, I text the lady from Glenfest who went, oh, that's fine, yeah, I'll get you three people. And they were there. There was no, it was like, we're on it. Yeah, and absolutely. It, if it, it needs to be done. To do with clubs, and as I said, clubs here are always, they're always neighbouring as well. Like, so there's always healthy rivalry, whether it's in football or anything. Yeah. There'll be a rivalry, but <clears throat> they're fantastic to support. Anything local like that, if you were saying the Oscars or anything like that, people will always give time for it. And I think these things are getting more competitive as well. Oh, they are, yeah, so for I, sure. I even see myself from judging the Strictly's now. That anyone you go to, like you have to be very careful what you say as well, because oh yeah, I, the, the, if I said something not controversial, like but something kind of just to get the crowd interacted and make him laugh, you, you'd hear him walk away saying, "Jesus hey, Christ, he, he got plenty stick about himself." <laughs> but that's the thing. thing. When I've judged any of those things, I just come out with, "You're all amazing." Yeah. In one form or another, because I who am I to judge somebody? Like you know, know what I mean when it comes know, to yeah, that. So same. I remember I did did one with uh, oh God, what's her name? I should remember her name. She's she's. 
she's a sports uh, journalist in RT. God, she, and she's from only up the road from me at home. Anyway, she had she was wanted to give people very uh, astute direction on where she felt. She was making notes at the middle, and Brendan Cummins was sitting on the other side of her. And Cummins is eyeball giving me the wink, like, on, look at this one now. She's making notes, and she was so like she'd be very useful. Yeah. But on the night, it was it was done and dusted. These people weren't going to try and make a career out of this. Like. No, no. I think people kind of like the, especially the crowd as well. Like I did. Is, um, one last week there for the carriage around the hospital and it was it was fantastic. They raised actually fifty grand. What? Yeah, that's bizarre. amazing. Yeah, like and everyone that was there was doctors, nurses, and we'd one of the top surgeons there, Doctor Tom McCormick, and he was so politically correct. <laughs> yeah. We were given four numbers: seven, eight, nine, ten. He gave every act an eight. Of course, yeah. And he, he was brilliant with his words. Like, so he was gallant about that's not right. Right attire for the HC and all this, and the crowd were just in hysterics because yeah. nobody was writing down something. It was just, it was kind of off the tongue kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the crowd was starting to interact and then as well. Like, and it's, it's a big laugh, and you know, but like, I, I think they are. They're fantastic fundraisers, and as I said, they're more, more competitive. People are putting more time from. But like as I said down here, people are very sportive anything like that. Like they once get started with they'll obviously break your balls and <laughs> when they start getting into now when they start getting more confident away towards it. Like it's kind of Tom. Oh, I've, can, I've been, put, can you put a bit more in there, Tom? Much in there I've been getting texts all week and emails. I was like, I don't know how you got my number or my email, but they did. And it was like, lads were just asking for They it. know where you live as well. No, yeah, uh, this is little pointers. Do uh, you know what? I don't care. I put my hand up to, to do it. And other. I'm actually, I meant to say, it, um, yeah, I, I've gone back to getting fit myself. My sister, my entire family have gotten ridiculously fit. Okay. I used to be the fit one. Then I became a comedian. Mm-hmm. which doesn't go hand in hand. Okay. They've all now gotten fit. And my sister basically shamed me into it after the panto, which does get you fit because you're yeah. doing two shows a day. Like she went, right, I'm actually, si- I've signed you up to the, uh, the Ken Mayer Quest Challenge. Oh, fantastic. And I went, ah, she goes, dad is, a- is after signing up. So it's like, oh, fuck me. All right. <laughs> he's, six- he's almost 66. Well, he, just ran- he, just- year, so he-, he just ran the marathon, <laughs> the Dublin you? City Marathon. Oh, yeah, 66. Oh, Jesus Christ. So like, I went, ah, man still walking around with an eight pack like you know like, yeah okay i better get my shit together stop eating jellies on the road again like. so you'll be you've been accomplished with dead so yeah together. pretty much yeah 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 so ireland's for the center that's the one for now i suppose yeah 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 pri- well i don't i don't know what the, my sister would two sisters definitely would go for it all right like, yeah. but but you know what though i was kind of i was you know you go through a certain period away from a thing it's like I, I could be comfortable for my rest of my days and not try and go back to this but going back to it was what I was fearing because I knew what the pain is of going back after season. But, but everyone kind of starts there. Do you know what I mean? As in, it's like I know it myself. I, like I, when I finished dancing last year, I lost a stone and a half. Like, um, like a lot of it was muscle. Like and I came back. No, do you know my, my feet were quicker on the pitch. But like people were saying, oh, geez, you need to put bolt on now, or we'll be we killing games. And they're like, yeah, right. But <laughs> the, the hardest thing is, is, is kind of. I don't want to say getting back training, but it's kind of getting back into that routine. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's like the, the long evenings now. Like everyone makes a blast for the gym for the first three months, nah. and then the long evening comes in. Like, era, I go home and cut the lawn or stuff something. There or, to be doing, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I have stuff to do. Better things to do yeah. inside the gym. So, like, I, I find when I when I finish playing football, we say at intercounty level, I know myself. People be when people meet you, they be always they're like if you were tipping the side, like said, so, you see, put on new weight. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. this kind of thing. So I'd always kind of mind myself because I think the one thing I learned is that, <clears throat> and this, this goes kind of business-wise as well, and I think it's Denise, my wife, said to me, it's like, when, you, when, you're, when you're playing football, it's great, and you're known as a footballer, but like, when you finish, what are you known for then? And like, that, that's one thing that kind of stuck me in. Yeah. But after dancing the stars, it was, it was 16 weeks. But after that, now, as I was saying, when the football careers come in, this fitness thing came up when I was there to myself, and first, my cousin Michael, I don't know, from England, he big big part playing. He came up with the idea as well. Like and he was kind of saying, we need to do this. I've great idea. I, I'll do the the internet side or the website side of it, and the two was working together. Like and I was saying, yeah, that's what I want to be known for. After like like Aidan and he went down and did this and that, not for money or anything like that. Yeah, but that you made something yourself. Of. Obviously, they can say that he went off dancing for sixteen weeks and whatever. Like, but it's just to do something now that you remember for after. Like and who knows, ten years time, they said you said website was a great thing for. Young people got this and that off it, or old people. And like, there's, as I said, there's everything on it. There's training. It doesn't have to be a G. It's a fitness and stuff like that. As Brilliant. Well, so, yeah. Brilliant. What's the website called, too? Because obviously so, we'll, we'll, we'll attach this further down the line. I'll be able to read it. AOMfitness.com. AOMfitness.com. AOMfitness.com, obviously. Yeah. 
Um, for, what does AOM stand for? I was there like... Mm. I know my, my parents made life very easy on me giving me a name, Tom. Tom, yeah. T-O-M. And the amount of people go, do you know that your initials... And I'm oh, like, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 I grew up with it, yeah. Try it's, it's, think they made it, life yeah. very handy on me, like... No, I, I didn't get that handy at all. No, like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, that's, that's, that's the, <clears throat> the reason why. And kind of, as I said, it's, it's a new challenge and there's... There's 101 gyms open there now, Tom. Oh, Jesus, I know. I was never going to open a gym, and I wouldn't have time. And people said, how are we going to tell you to do this? Because I work six days, I'm off four days in the garage, which we're lucky enough. Right, yeah, yeah. Rest days, and I spend my rest days at home, Lucia. So I have four days where Lucia's with me, and I'm at home, and I'm studying constantly, and I'm on the laptop, and you're going through stuff, and you're studying as well. So, like, there's no better way to put it into practice than yeah. to put it on the website, like, and... See what the rest of people think about it. And you're obviously going to just before we wrap up, we may as well, where can everybody find you on Instagram and all the rest of it? <coughs> so Jesus Christ, what's my I don't know. It's O'Mahony back to front. Uh, do you know what? I'll put yes. the links into yeah. the into this podcast as well, because I know I forget. I'll just get on to Dale. Do you know what? Mine was something stupid and it was Dale that went, get all your fucking handles to line up, will you? Yeah. And I went, I th- what? And he went, Jesus Christ, will I do it for you? I went, okay. And then flip side, do you know what? It's brilliant to see. Because I remember even one night, he, like, like this, where say he was he was giving me pointers on this stuff, and I'm like, this is a lifetime away from what I know. Yeah. And then on the flip side, to, Samantha Mumbo walked in. She goes, lads, I'm going up to the, the, the Thai. Does anybody want any Thai food? Tom, do you want some Thai? I went, Jesus, I don't know. And she says to Dale, she goes, would you like some Thai food? And God bless his innocent. He just turned to me and went, Tom, do I, do I like Thai food? I'm like, yes, Dale, we like Thai food. It's fine. <laughs> but, like, but like that, even now I see so. No, and I'm not massive on social media like it doesn't bother me I upload on followers and things like that Grant but <clears throat> it's like the I wouldn't know that either like the certain times where you're supposed to post yeah. things and yeah 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 things like this it's, it's me but like that's the way the, the world like you might give it 10 years time yeah exactly you know? well Aidan thank you very very much I won't take another minute of your time thank you very much mighty stuff come back.